Please welcome back to the stage director Yuan Sak and the incredibly and marvelously villainous Yi Sun Gyun. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Just before we get started, in typical fashion, I always get uh, one person to thank, uh, to thank, or one organization to thank. I want to thank the Korean Cultural Center. Every year they make uh, the program, the Korean programming possible. Please give them a warm shout out. They're very special to us, and it's a very long partnership. And a housekeeping note. So the, uh, I will take, uh, I will uh, start this Q and A. Uh, uh, but uh, there will be um, a couple of volunteers circulating with uh, little cards and pencils. If you have a question, raise your hand and they will run towards you and we'll gather them and then I will field some questions from uh, you guys. All right, one sock. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm so nervous. I hate this, like, you know, after the film, doing DNA, I don't know what, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm very nervous. While you guys are getting tortured by my film, we're, we're, we had a beer. We had two nice beers. You had better shape than uh, eight years ago, though. We, we had this uh, uh, situation a few years ago. But uh, one sec, I would really recommend this film to you as well if you enjoy this movie. Uh, one sec made a film seven, eight years ago called The Royal Taylor. Really marvelous film as well, full of uh, historical fantasy. <laughs> it's super good. Uh, okay, I think we still have that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I want to ask you, uh, feel free to answer in Korean if you're more comfortable. Uh, I want to start with the obvious, the origin, the origin of the film, and why you're sticking to the comedy genre. Uh, film after film, we've talked about this in private. It's a little, you know, it's, it's a little strange to interview your own buddy on stage, I have to say, but, uh, So I want to ask you about how you came up uh, with this uh, unusual musical comedy. <laughs> the, the script, I got it from, uh, they're not here, but the two producers who, the creator of the, uh, the head of the production, they sent me a script and the script was very black comedy, very serious about abuse, the woman getting abused by a husband and trying to kill them. Uh, and it was very serious script with a twist to it. And I don't know why they gave me the script. And, and I totally forgot about it, and I was doing my project, and project didn't go well. So then they came back with the script, like, hey, we were waiting for you. But I think they weren't waiting for me. They were like trying to get another director. <laughs> Probably they couldn't get another director. So. But, no, but, but I, they had only the nice thing. So, so, they, so they gave me a script, and they said, you could do whatever you want to do. So really? <laughs> So I could do whatever I want to do, and so that's how this project started. And the thing about comedy is, I just love, you know, the comedy. Just, you know, the people laughing and that joy, you know. So I guess that's why I keep trying to do comedy, but it's not a, my comedy is not like loved by not everybody, so, yeah, so that's that. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think it's, it's fine for today. Uh, Mr. Lee sang <laughs> so I want to ask, I want to call you Jonathan almost. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, you, you asked me. Uh, I want to ask you how the script ended on your table, how you became involved with a project uh, that was shortly after Parasite, if I'm not mistaken, but I might be wrong with the timeline. So I want to ask you how you ended up being uh, involved. Right <laughs> 네, 대본을, 네, 받았고, 어떻게 해서, 기존, 기존 좀 뒤에 이제 참여결정을 하시는 걸로 했는데, 일단 감독님의 처음 한국 개봉 전에 남자 사용 설명 일단 감독님께서 시나리오를 제안하신 게 너무 기뻤고 근데 지금까지 제가 했던 캐릭터랑 너무 이질감이 있었기 때문에 처음에 거절하려고 했어요. 거절하려고 했다가 그때가 오스카 가는 길이었는데 한 번만 미팅을 하고 가자 제안을 해줘가지고 
가는 길에 약간 지금 캐릭터를 보시면 아시겠지만 그 엉뚱한 사기꾼 기질의 제안으로 제가 좀 넘어갔죠. 감독님의 유니크함이 넘어갔고 그때 오스카 파티에 가가지고 이한희 씨를 파티에서 만났다가 거기서 이제 서로 너가 하면 함께 참여하겠다 이런 <웃음> 제안을 서로 하면서 이제 결정을 내렸습니다. So I really loved um, his first film, um, How to Use Guys with Secret Tips. And it's become a bit of a cult classic in Korea, if you will. Um, and so I was really happy that he, won he considered me for his script. Um, in the beginning, I wanted to decline because it was such a different <laughs> character from <laughs> what I'm used to playing. But um, I was like, OK, let me just take one meeting with you. And so before the Oscars, we had a meeting. And I think I sort of got conned mm -hmm. into <laughs> making a film. Um, and then after that, I was at the Oscars party. And um, I actually coincidentally met actress Yi h a n i who was also in the film. And so we sort of um, got to talking about the film. And we kind of made a pact to, if you do it, I'll, I will as well. And so that's how it came about. Yeah, but with, it was. It was the saddest. It was a one of the saddest day when Parasite won the Oscar. <laughs> and I was so happy in Korea. But me and my producers were like, "Oh yeah, I don't think he's gonna do it." <laughs> so, so like, we're uh, let's go find somebody else. <laughs> we're like the three saddest people when like the Korea won the first Oscar. <laughs> Because he thought he was just going to be too big, he said, yeah, why would I do this? He's already big, but he's yeah, exactly. already big, so why would he want to do this? That was a weird mystery. <laughs> so can, so that, can I ask you what attracted you, aside from uh, Ihani's involvement in the project, what made you think, oh, i, I got to play this guy and work with... Uh, 네, 이 사람은 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 Uh, there's a lot of fantasy in there, there's musical numbers, so it's not actually a, a straightforward, simple sort of love out loud comedy. Can you tell us a little bit how it was uh, building, building this series? Yes, these things were built on the project. It was actually not easy, but it was a lot of musical and pop music. It was a lot of technical music, but it was a lot of music. 일단은 캐릭터가 제가 지금까지 했던 것보다 매, 매우 과장되고 좀 엉뚱하고 만화적인 있는 캐릭터이기 때문에 이거를 어떻게 제가 접근할까 고민을 좀 많이 했는데 감독님하고 의외로 소통이 너무 잘 돼가지고 거의 연애하듯이 맨날 캐릭터에 대한 톡을 주고받으면서 굉장히 서로 피드백을 많이 주고받았고요. 그리고 굉장히 좀 이게 제가 과감하고 처음에 조금 너무 과장스러운 캐릭터를 연기할 때 주저함이 없지 않아 있었는데 감독님이 너무 그 뭐라 그럴까 그어 연기할 때마다 그 반응들이 너무 좋으셔가지고 어떤 힘이 됐고 그리고 한번 망가지는 게 힘들지 나중에 어느 캐릭터에 도달할 때좀더 자유로움을 느꼈던 것 같아요 제가 지금까지 했던 그 어떤 연기보다 좀 자유롭고 즐겁게 연기했던 것 같습니다 So as you can see, the character was really silly, almost animation-like. Uh, so um, we, the process of working on the character was um, director Lee and I really connected on a very personal level. And so we really chatted a lot and gave each other a lot of feedback on like, how to create this character. I will say I was definitely at first tentative and, playing, and worried about, am I doing too much or am I playing too much? Um, but every time I would try something, he would um, always be so supportive, and it, his reactions really gave me faith in what I was doing. Um, and you know, like once you go for it and know that there are no bounds to it, to, to something, <laughs> then you're like free. Then you're like really free to do things. So I think um, that really helped in that process. Thank you. Uh, you want to say something? Uh, I mean, it was very memorable. process. It was very fun. I mean, you know, I wanted, I had no idea what this film was going to turn out. 
I mean, well, I have to pretend that I know something. So we have to start from somewhere. So how are we gonna make this character? So I, I, we text each other. We send like references, and I, I, I was very careful not to offend them. Like come up with like, you know. So I was, I started from Zoolander. Then she said, she said, hey, did you watch the Tiger King in Netflix? <laughs> so that's how uh, Tiger like, King. Uh, so he went way over. <laughs> I'm going to ask a couple more uh, questions before turning to the audience. Uh, do we have the cards? Oh, sorry. Um, so, as a musical comedy, obviously the soundtrack is quite critical, I think, for some of us, Asians or Koreans. Uh, we're all familiar a little bit with K pop from a while ago. It's, uh, I think it's a treat. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of uh, building the soundtrack for it? Uh, the musical cues are really important in the film. and. There's some really fun tracks in there. And uh, maybe not all of you are familiar how in a budget, I think, buying the, the, the rights to a, to a song uh, is very expensive. So can you tell us a bit about that? The K-pop at uh, all? So, I mean, this, this is how Korean film starts. Like, when you begin, in your reference, you have Beatles and all the music you want. Mm -hmm. And as the production goes, you can't afford them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we're very lucky because, like, the rain, the song Rain Rainism, like, uh, everybody knows that song. It's, like, so popular, and that song makes you, like, your blood burning. It's like, you're on the back of a bus, and you're listening to that song. It feels like this bus is yours. It's black. So, uh, that's how we decided to do that song. But because of the relationship with Honey and Rain, he actually recorded the whole song for free. Oh. That was very crazy. Yeah. And he, <laughs> actually, he remastered the whole thing, so it is, it's better than this old one. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the original song. And the, another song, the Hengbo. It's very. Uh, we have to be very careful with this song because there's still like fanatic fans out there about this group. Okay. My, you know, my my cousin's you know, fanatic fans. She loved it. So it, you can't say anything bad about that, but this song, just every time I hear it, it's like gaslighting. <laughs> and you're happy, your life is so good, and I really feel happy. And every time I listen to it, and like, shh. and we and him, we were talking about it. Songil and I were talking about this song that oh yeah, we need some kind of music to, you know, do gaslighting, and we decided to yeah, the angle sounds very good. But then we had a. Nengmyeon, Pong Nuruk, and there he was, a singer. So one of the, the idol member was like sitting, eating there. So we're like, yes, so all chango, chango. So we're like, yeah, this is it, we gotta use this song. It's like, this is the... So what did you do? You went to him, hey. He knows it, so. So you were involved in the creative process at all. You were quite involved in uh, some decisions. <laughs> the whole process, like all the actor was in, like, every part. Every actor. I think we are going to talk about it. We are not 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 going to talk about Tell me about the singer and I are not friends, but we're acquaintances and we know each other. And so um, when we were having this conversation, eating naengmyeon, we I just spotted Tell me about the singer eating naengmyeon alone. And so I literally just went up to him and said, I think we need to use your song for the film. Can we do that? And then he was like, Yeah, sure. That's gonna happen. And so that's how it happened. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it was a very fun shoot. Like the atmosphere was very good on set. Very, very fun shoot. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> right, I'll take some questions from uh, from the audience now. Uh, so that's for uh, that's for uh, Isongun actually. What was your favorite? What was your favorite scene in the film? So the Bulgarian scene is the one. I think it's usually. 대본에 있던 신이 아니었고요. 저희가 그때 코로나 때 영화를 찍어가지고 양해 로케이션이 쉽지가 않았어요. 그래서 어쩔 수 없이 어 지금 이게 원래 한강 유람선에서 뭐 이렇게 해프닝이 벌어지는 신이었는데 
촬영 한 3일 전에 대본이 바뀌었는데 구체적인 뭐, 뭐 지문이나 뭐 대사가 크게 있지 않고 그냥 한번 우리 현장 가서 만들어 보자 하는 방법으로 연결했는데 그날따라 배우들의 호흡이 너무 좋았고 생각지 못한 에너지가 같이 뭔가 유기적으로 돌아가는 느낌이 들어가지고 연기할 때 너무 재밌었고 생각지 못한 또 어떤 뭐 리액션들이 나와가지고 너무 즐겁고 그러니까 그 신을 찍는 순간 아이 영화가 이제 호흡이 맞아가는구나 하면 그냥 느끼게 해준 그러니까 초반에 찍었는데 그 장면 때문에 되게 하나가 되는 신이었던 것 같아요. So um, I would say definitely the sauna scene. Um, funnily enough, this, the sauna scene was not in the script um, because this was during COVID times. We were having you know trouble getting our locations, and it was originally set to um, we were originally set to film on a boat on the River Han, but then you know we couldn't make that happen. So everything changed like in in like three days. We only had like three days to prep like a different scene, and so we just went. Um, into filming with the mindset of let's just make something happen. Like we didn't really know how, but on that particular day of the shoot, the synergy was just so great between the actors and everything really just came together really organically. And I think when that shoot day wrapped, I definitely felt like, oh, we're in sync now. Like everyone was so in sync. Thank you. Uh, question for you, w o n g s a k Were there any scenes that were cut? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> uh, alternative e n d i n g s Can you tell us about some scenes that were cut? Uh, there, there is a couple of scenes like that was cut and and that we couldn't shoot because of COVID. So like the whole pro film process, we're like that was shot during the COVID times. Uh, 2000. I was around actually. 2020. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning. So like cities. Seoul was shut down, so we had to we had to shoot it. It's it's not tree. It's supposed to be like city light background, but we couldn't stay in Seoul, so we had to like group around. We're like a moving circus <laughs> around. Like you know, we had to improv. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Only two b e e r s man. That's better than. Last time, were there the scenes <laughs> that were cut? Uh, was there any you wanted to keep, or I'm sure there's some endings as well. That's an interesting question. Yeah, the version that I had is like two hour long, and I guess people hated it. So <laughs> the production company, the, the investor, they hated it. So we had to cut it down. So there's a lot of. I mean, I like the scene, but you know, I want it. You know, like you know, it's funny scenes, but. It yeah, just didn't work out, and some scene was shot so bad, so embarrassing. So, like the ending was, we had an ending, we shot the ending, but we just we're like this, like moving back. We just, oh, location is good, let's just shoot there. So we like improv everything. So we shot the ending, but it was so embarrassing. I couldn't, I couldn't show it to my actors or anyone else. So we just had to cut down. Okay. Still so, regrets. So, so like ending, the ending was. a l m o n d Youngchan, they're singing and like they wanted to be a singer. The whole like storyline, like, <laughs> they were like singing in this cafe, and y o r e comes mm -hmm. to say hi, and that's like the end, very sweet ending. But it's just so bad. <laughs> so no regrets. There's not going to be a director's cut of the. That's not going to be. This is, it. this is the director's cut. Right. So you're going to be. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Very close. Okay. <laughs> But like, it's better than what I had. <laughs> and what was your favorite uh, scene to shoot? Actually, that's two questions. The honey and palm running. Uh -huh. uh, that's my favorite scene. I still watch it every day. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Why? 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 Uh, that's why. Uh, we g r e t You just love it. Yeah. Just, yeah. We we shot it at this like forest. We have a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, a question. Okay. A question. This is this is fun. Uh, question for you both: Is Jonathan based on a real person? I mean, from your perspective as a as a director, and how did you build the character of uh, Jonathan? I mean, he's a great actor. Actually, he's a great actor. 실존 
인물이면 안될것 같아요. 그러니까 감독님이 얘기하시고 이렇게 이거는 이렇게 누가 하느냐에 따라 굉장히 많이 바뀔 캐릭터를 뜬것 같은데 처음에 대본을 보고 제가 어떻게 해야 될지 그림이 안, 도할, 안 떠올렸던 캐릭터였고 그러다 보니까 좀더 많은 뭐 레퍼런스나 뭐 감독님하고 어느 자유 같은 거를 같이 공유를 좀 많이 하면서 약간 정말 말도 안 되는 얘기를 많이 했던 것 같아요. 매일 밤 얘기를 하다가 어 일단 뭐 의상부터 뭐 머리 스타일부터 꼼꼼하게 다 한번 해보자 라는 방법으로 접근을 했고 그러니까 그래가지고 처음 뭐 이렇게 제가 외형적인 거를 그렇게 과하게 표현하는 캐릭터가 처음이기 때문에 머리 붙인 머리였는데 한달 전부터 그걸 붙이고 다녔거든요. 그랬더니 처음 시작할 때 조금 익숙하게 시작을 했던 것 같아요. Um, is it based on a real person? No. <laughs> um, I think I really had no idea how to even approach this character when I began. Um, so the process really began with sharing just references and ideas and research with a director of E. And I think some of our conversations were just really absurd because you know this is an absurd character. Um, I think what was really helpful for me was that we started from um, the outside in for this character, um, specifically with costumes, hairstyles, Um, his facial hair. Um, there was a, there was a particular wig that I wear for this, um, a, a sticking wig, and I started wearing it even like a month before shooting. So once I actually was on set, it felt like a part of me, and not like a wig on me. So I think that really helped in that process. Thank you. Uh, that's a fun question. So I'll ask you, uh, <laughs> uh, have you had a song battle with the two songs, Realism, <laughs> Happiness, in the movie at the karaoke at the Noriwa? <laughs> no, personally, I don't like singing in public. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like listening <laughs> to other people sing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm going to check myself and ask you a serious question a little bit. You, you often talk about American cinema, and I want to ask you actually two questions in one. I will ask you about the reception of the film, because it was an interesting how it happened, and how the film uh, is already a cult classic, uh, instant cult classic in Korea. So I'll ask you how it was received, and you always talk about American comedies. You don't really talk about your Korean influences. You're very, uh, you mentioned Enchanted in some interviews I read before, so that's a lot of questions in one. But... See, I'm Korean, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I. There for me to talk about a film that influenced me. So it happens to be, you know, a lot of Hollywood films, a lot of Hollywood comedies were very like influential to me. I love American comedies, like Saturday Night Live, and I actually was in it in the Korean one, and I made an ass out of myself. <laughs> and the uh, SNL Korea, SNL Korea, SNL Korea. I thought I could do it really well. So, for sure. <laughs> All my friends called, I cannot be on the TV. <laughs> Very like, uh, anyways, I, I went off the track. What was the question? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the reception of the film. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how the film was so received it's, in it's Korea. Very polarizing. Everybody thought this was like, you know, just regular comedy. And got, people got shocked. And it's like here, they have a, they have a rotten tomato. Mm -hmm. We have a golden egg. <laughs> the golden egg got cracked. Like, we're the yeah. fastest film that. Crack the egg, you become like the egg fry. And after like four hours of, after four hours of releasing, then like next week it was different. Like all these, like fanatic fans start coming. There's like people who watch 20 times, and then all of a sudden like all these people got together and they got this egg back to golden egg. <laughs> never done, that never happened in Korean, you know, the film history. They say. So we, we still have a golden egg, but the score-wise, yeah, bad. <laughs> they were the worst of, yeah, all. <laughs> Very stay in history, clearly, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it has a, its own following. Everyone, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but like, that's how, seriously, like, the fans, we never felt that kind of love before. I mean, I don't know about something for me. <laughs> never had love like that. Like, so many people showed up with like wearing the same clothes and doing this sign. <laughs> and, uh, What do you think that is? This particular type of fandom on, on, on your film is quite unique. That's a hard question. Okay. I mean, I think the people 
there's a lot of fan culture in Korea, mm -hmm. and no one ever talked about it. Okay. And this film is kind of talked about those like real fans that who's there in like on, on the dark dark, but like really giving them love. And those people really pre appreciate this film. Okay. So like, yeah, they have. So we have a uh, crazy fans here, <laughs> and it's gonna go. F I think. For a long time, just it, it become like a cult. So, so what's next for you? And then I guess we wrap up soon. But what is next for you in terms of uh, your yeah, next project? Yes. Always there's something, but you never know it's gonna happen. Uh, It'll happen, I'm sure. You made, uh, you made that movie. Really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you what about yourself? What, uh, what is next uh, after? Uh, you had quite a few films actually. There's, has Sleep been released yet? I'm not 100% sure. And the um, mutant dogs movie, I forgot the title. There's another blockbuster movie oh, with uh, the I mutant know. dogs. Yeah. Uh, what is next for you in terms of uh, what's coming out in Korea and overseas? Ah, and then 9월 둘째 주 첫째 주에 잠이라는 영화가 개봉을 할것 같고요. 그 지금 아까 말씀해 주신 영화가 이번에 칸네다 비평가 옆에다 미르나이 섹션에 진출해 가지고 전 굉장히 좋은 경험을 하고 왔고. 그리고 아마도 잠은 지금 개봉이 9월 달로 확정이 됐고 그리고 탈출 셀러스 프로젝트는 아마 12월 겨울에 이제 그 시즌에 맞게끔 개봉할 것 같습니다. 그리고 지금 한 10월부터는 새로운 시리즈 이제 촬영 프로가 예정입니다. Um, so I think uh, my next film, Sleep, um, that will be released in September in Korea. Um, this was invited to the Cannes Midnight section, which uh, I really, really enjoyed. Um, there's another blockbuster buster film called Escape um, that's coming in the winter, I think, of this year. And then in uh, October, I will be uh, going into shooting uh, a limited series. Yeah, don't worry about him. He, he <laughs> Five films, that's not even... They're, they're in like the vault. It's gonna open. So you don't have to worry about him. He, he, he's doing well. That's a great way of concluding tonight's talk. Thank you, Wangita. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.